Hey Henry, how come you're home early? I thought you'd be back on Sunday. He got pissed off at me. This is my house. I can come and go anytime I want. I don't need to give you any justification for that. Why are you unnecessarily getting angry? I was asking this because you said you'd be away for the weekend. Just shut up. I don't want to waste my time talking to you. Get dinner for me. Henry, I did not cook dinner because I had some leftover food from the morning. Oh, I knew it. I knew that you spend the day sluggishly watching TV and doing nothing when I'm away. You are such a lazy woman. Why are you saying such filthy things to me? Give me 15 minutes, I'll cook something for you. I gave this comfortable life to you, you damn ungrateful woman. Hi, my name is Martina. I'm a 40-year-old woman. I've been married to Henry for the last 10 years. I was raised single-handedly by my mother, so I started working after passing out of high school. Although my mother insisted that I go to college, I thought that it would be too much of a burden on her. I started working as a cashier in the local supermarket. Although the initial salary was low, I lived frugally and saved most of it. I worked very hard at my job, extended the shifts, and sometimes worked in two shifts during peak sale seasons. Gradually, I started looking at the accounts of the supermarket as I had taken some finance classes from a friend. The owner of the supermarket was impressed by my hard work and dedication. After a while, I was promoted to the position of manager at the supermarket, where I took care of the inventory, accounts, and the staff. One day, a man lost his wallet at the supermarket and was yelling at one of my staff. I kept the wallet right here, how did it vanish? Is there no safety in your supermarket? But sir, the customer should take care of their belongings. What the hell? Hearing the commotion, a crowd gathered near the aisle. I rushed to the spot and intervened. Hello sir, I'm the manager of this supermarket. Please come aside, let me help you. Well, I kept my wallet in one of these racks to pick up something, and when I turned back, I didn't find the wallet. It is your responsibility to help me get back my wallet. I nodded while he continued to rant about his lost wallet. I quickly messaged my security department to fetch the CCTV footage of the last 10 minutes of the particular aisle. I also asked them to call the local police patrol of the area. Are you even listening to me? I want my wallet as it is stolen at your supermarket. Sure sir, we already have captured the footage and the face of the suspect. The police will be here in a minute and we would share the details of the suspect. By then, the police arrived, and the security guard shared the details with the police. The police identified the person on the footage to be a local thief. They took the details of the man, and they all left. The next day, when I was just doing my usual work at the supermarket, the same guy showed up. Hey, I didn't get a chance to thank you yesterday. Oh, did you get the wallet? Yeah. The police nabbed the thief from the other lane. He was not able to go too far. The police said it was due to your quick reaction in alerting the police and providing them with the CCTV footage. The thief was caught, and I got the wallet back, so thank you so much. I blushed at his kind words. Well, I was just doing my job. I'm glad that I could help you. I'm sorry that I yelled at you yesterday. I was in a panic. I'm new at this place, and the wallet had my ID and credit cards. No worries, I understand. Hey, may I know your name? My name is Martina. Martina, my name is Henry. I live two buildings away from this place. Would you mind having a coffee with me, please? I just want to thank you for your help. This is how our story began. 
Henry shifted to that place a week ago, and then we accidentally met at the supermarket. Initially, I refused to go out with him, but then he insisted, and I went to the nearby cafe. I liked his grateful nature. Gradually, we started officially dating. After a few months, when my rental agreement expired, Henry suggested that I move in with him. Those were the best days of my life. Before we knew it, we fell in love. Henry worked at an IT company, so he had a busy schedule, but we spent our weekends partying and enjoying our life like there was no tomorrow. We dated for two years. One day, I was having a regular conversation with my mom over the phone, and she told me, Martina, after your dad passed away, I dedicated my life to your upbringing. It gives me so much joy to see you as an independent woman. What happened, mom? Why are you talking like this? Honey, I'm getting old. I'm worried that if I die, you'll be left alone, as you don't have anyone else to support you. Mom, don't worry about me. Besides, you're not dying anytime soon. You're still very young. Honey, it's time for you to think about getting married. I want to see you as a bride before dying. I got uncomfortable with this. Mom, stop it. Although I shrugged her off, I got tense when Henry saw me tensed. He asked, Hey, what's up? Why do you look dull? Nothing serious. Hey, come on, tell me. I told him about the conversation I had with mom. After listening to this, he said, I was also thinking about the same. Let's get married. Are you sure about this? Yes, absolutely. I jumped on my bed with happiness and excitement. Next, we met each other's parents and told them about our wedding plans. My mom got emotional when she met Henry. I have no one in this world except her. Please take good care of her. Don't worry, I'll love and protect her as you did. Henry's parents were also very sweet and kind to me. We soon got married. Henry was not very keen on having a baby. He said, I want to enjoy a carefree life with you. A baby would become a liability. But I insisted on having one, so eventually, he gave up. Five years after our marriage, my daughter Sarah was born, which completed our family. I was having a difficult time managing the baby and my work, so Henry suggested that I take a break from my work and focus on Sarah. Henry assured me that he earned well enough for the family to lead a decent life. I left my job to take care of Sarah and the house full-time. Henry was terrible at household work, his house was a mess before I moved in. He always blamed his busy schedule for the mess, saying, I'm so busy with my work that I don't get time to clean the house. So, I was the one who did the household chores, but Henry helped me whenever he was free. When I was pregnant, Henry went out of his way to take care of me. Besides, he was always grateful to me to take care of the house so well, so I had no complaints. After I left the job, Henry gradually stopped doing anything at home, even when I asked him to get some groceries while returning from the office, he refused. Honey, I'm tired. Why don't you get it by yourself? I did not complain to him because he was always polite, but eventually, his tone got rough. Now, when I ask him for any help, he would rebuke me. You're becoming lazy, sitting at home. I wonder what brought this change in his attitude. Initially, I thought that he was upset because I could not give enough time to him. I was busy taking care of my daughter. Before Sarah was born, Harry and I spent our weekends partying, trekking, and traveling to new places. We had an adventurous life. Now, with the baby, I could not lead that life with Henry. I can't leave her at my friend's place so often. Whenever I turned down any party plan of Henry's, he would get upset and complained, 
that's why I didn't want to have a baby. Don't act stupid, she's our daughter. Once she grows a little older, we can get back to our lives like before. Henry loved us, but he loved his freedom more. I told him, honey, why don't you party with your girlfriend with your friends? I'll take care of Sarah. Initially, he was reluctant to do so without me, but later, he started going out with me, and that's when everything changed. As he started going out alone, his attitude gradually changed towards me. He often came home late from work and was out on weekends partying with his colleagues and friends. I tried my best to keep him happy. I watched recipes for exotic meals on YouTube, took notes, and spent hours cooking them for Henry. Although he enjoyed eating those meals, he never showed any sign of appreciation. On some days, when the meal didn't turn out as expected, he would just rattle the cutlery with anger and leave the dinner midway. He started complaining about anything and everything at home. Suddenly, he started hating the meals I cooked. He pointed out faults in my cleaning, laundry, cooking, and everything else. I kept wondering to myself if this was all my mistake because I was faltering at the household chores. I told myself that Henry worked hard to give us a comfortable life, so this is the least I could do for him. But no matter what I did for him, he was never happy. He had nothing but complaints for me. His words were mostly these, this house is a mess. Why aren't my clothes not ironed properly? This food tastes horrible. The dishes are so dirty. You look clumsy these days. I thought of divorcing Henry, but after staying with him for so many years, I was scared of living alone. I was scared I'll not be able to take care of Sarah all by myself. My mom passed away two years ago, hence I had no one to go to. I could not share my problems with anyone. I felt lonely. Years passed, but Henry showed no sign of remorse. His attitude became worse with every passing day. Gradually, I lost all my love and respect for him. I wanted to move out, but I didn't want my daughter to grow up in poverty. I wasn't sure if I would be able to give her a decent life. I desperately wanted Sarah to grow up so that I could get out of this situation. Until then, I had no option but to put up with Henry's nonsense. But one day, Henry crossed all his limits. He was away on a weekend trip with his friends, so I didn't prepare dinner that day. I had leftover food from lunch, which I thought to have for dinner. But he showed up out of nowhere. Hey Henry, how come you're home early? I thought you would be back on Sunday. He got pissed off at me. This is my house. I can come and go anytime I want. I don't need to give you any justification for that. This was the tone in which he talked to me these days. Why are you unnecessarily getting angry? I was asking this because you said you'd be away for the weekend. Just shut up. I don't want to waste my time talking to you. Get dinner for me. Henry, I did not cook dinner because I have some leftover food from the morning. Oh, I knew it. I knew that you spend the days sluggishly watching TV and doing nothing when I'm away. You are such a lazy woman. Why are you saying such filthy things to me? Give me 15 minutes, I'll cook something for you. Don't you dare talk back to me, you clumsy woman. Henry, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. Just look at my house, you have made this a filthy place. It stinks everywhere. The house is cloth with Sarah's toys. Isn't it natural to have toys littered around in a house when you have kids? He went towards the kitchen and took a plate from the sink and said, Sarah doesn't play with these plates, right? Then why is this plate lying dirty in the sink? Why didn't you clean it? I was perplexed by this. There was just one plate in the sink, and I thought of washing it after dinner. 
I never realized that Henry would make such a fuss out of this. Henry, it is just one plate. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Hearing this, he rushed to the refrigerator, opened it wide, and yelled, it is not just one plate, my fridge stinks. He then took the stuff out from the fridge one by one and threw them on the floor, saying, throw all this trash away. You have made my fridge a trash bin. I just stood there, baffled. I didn't know how to react to Henry's sudden madness. He then took the leftover food and threw it into the sink. I could not control my anger. Henry, please stop this ruckus. Your house was filthy when I moved in. It was filled with empty cans, bottles, and wrappers. I cleaned it and made this place a home. I did your laundry, cooked meals for you, and did the dishes, even before we were married. I managed my work along with all these household chores. He interrupted, I gave this comfortable life to you, you ungrateful woman. You are living in that tiny, shabby apartment. I took pity on you and gave you shelter in my luxurious apartment. I work with the smartest women in IT, yet I married a low-qualified cashier like you. I took you to places where you could have never imagined with your meager income. He went on, so stop complaining to me. You should be grateful to me for all these favors and serve me as an obedient homemaker. I felt humiliated. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I broke down. I could only manage to say, Henry, I thought you did all this because you were in love. I didn't realize that you were doing me any favors. Don't start your crap. A woman like you uses emotions to trap people. That's what you did to me. You trapped me. Saying this, he stormed out of the house and was away all night. I spent the night crying in despair, thinking about the happy days I spent with Henry. I missed my mom terribly. The next day, Henry came home, and as soon as I opened the door, he shoved the divorce papers in my face and yelled, just sign these papers and leave my house. I was emotionally drained and had no energy left to indulge in any further conversation with Henry. I took the papers and said, okay, I'll sign. He was not expecting that I would agree to a divorce without hesitance. My calmness annoyed him and he shouted, good that you agree to the divorce, else I would have made your life miserable. Now I'll be living my life freely and peacefully. I was trapped under this whole crop of marriage. I packed my bags, and while leaving the house, I handed over an envelope to Henry. I kept it on the table in front of him and said, I'll send the signed divorce papers after including my terms. What? What do you mean by your terms? You are not getting anything from me. You have been a parasite and sucked on my money for so many years. You won't get a penny from me. Speak to my lawyer in court. What the hell? What's there in this envelope? He opened the envelope and was shocked to see what was inside it. The envelope had a copy of all the pieces of evidence I received from the investigating agency. Yes, I hired an agency to find out the truth behind Henry's changing attitude. The agency sent me the details of Henry's infidelity. I got the evidence that morning before Henry came home. I was shattered by the photo evidence, which showed that Henry cheated on me and spent his weekends with different women. Despite Henry's rude behavior, I was okay to give him another chance, but I could not bear his unfaithfulness. Hence, I accepted the divorce at once. Henry carefully checked all the evidence and said nonchalantly, but I was not serious with any of them. I just had fun with them. I was baffled by his words. I could not control my anger. You cheated on me. I was considerate to let you go for late night parties and vacations without me. Instead of being grateful to me, you cheated on me. It was all your fault. You became a potato bag after the baby. 
You refused to party with me outside. You didn't come for the treks. I sacrificed those late night parties and treks for our daughter. I wish you realized your duties as a father too. Saying this, I took Sarah into my arms and left the house. I checked into a hotel for a few days and called up my ex-boss, the owner of the supermarket where I worked earlier. I told him about my situation and he was shocked to know this. He gave me a job in inventory management in the same supermarket as I knew everyone there. It was not difficult for me to resume my work. My boss offered me temporary accommodation at an apartment that had just been vacated by his previous tenants. Meanwhile, I hired a lawyer and set my divorce terms to Henry. The lawyer helped me demand child support and good alimony on the grounds of Henry's infidelity. Seeing the alimony amount, Henry called me several times, but I ignored his calls. He sent the voice note asking for negotiation, but I was adamant to get compensated for the damage and the trauma I had been subjected to. Henry didn't have an affair with one particular woman, but he was fooling around with a lot of women, including his colleagues and some random girls whom he met during parties or trips. He also got into the wrong company and took drugs sometimes. Maybe that was the reason for his elevated anger and frustration, which he leashed out on me. I caught up Henry's parents and told them everything. They were shattered to know that Henry could do such horrible things. I also couriered some of the photos in which Henry was being cozy with his colleagues in his office. My lawyer told me that Henry is not being treated well at his office after his colleagues got to know about his affairs. His manager has even threatened him that he would be expelled from the company if he repeats the same. The colleagues with whom he had the affairs have also left the office in shame as the photos maligned their reputation too. Henry continues to work there as he had to pay the alimony and the child support. After a few months, I got an email from Henry. Hey Martina, I'm sorry for what I did to you. When you were with me, I did not realize your importance. I'm grateful to you for doing everything for me, from cleaning, laundry, dishes, to the meals you prepared for me. You made my place a home to live in. Without you, the place has again become a mess. I miss you. Although the email may be emotional, I did not think of getting back to Henry. He missed me because I took care of him and his house. He treated me like a doormat when I was with him. My self-confidence was crushed by his ego and attitude. I don't want to go back to that life where my daughter sees me treated like a doormat. I want to raise her in an environment where she understands the value of self-worth. I have gotten the apartment from my savings and from the alimony. I'm able to lead a decent life and provide a good education to my daughter with my income and child support. I wish to see my daughter grow up to be a confident and independent woman. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.